here with probably one of the fittest people on the planet, Chrissy Wellington. So, Chrissy, uh, for the uninitiated, would you just like to explain what it is that you do? I do a sport called Ironman, which is a form of triathlon. Triathlon's made up of um, many different distances. It's always swim, bike and run. I do the most masochistic of all, which is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, um, followed by a marathon as the grand finale. <laughs> and that's pretty a scare, a very daunting task for someone to take it up. So what on earth was it that inspired you to get involved in the, in the Ironman races? I didn't ever have career aspirations to be even a professional athlete, let alone a professional triathlete, let alone a professional Ironman athlete. Um, I was attracted to the challenge and that's what attracted me to triathlon in the first place. I initially did the, the shorter events, the sprint distance and what we call the Olympic distance triathlon. And it was only when I became a professional triathlete in 2007 that my coach said, well, do you want to try an Ironman? And initially I said, no, you've got to be absolutely crazy to do something like that. But I was easily persuaded. And, you know, within a few months, I was on the start line of, of, of my first Ironman. So I have to say it's, you know, it's a challenge. And whatever I've done in my life, I've always approached it with, with an open mind and been willing to take on, uh, you know, a new, a new challenge when I face with one. And obviously a lot of people would look at the discipline you're doing and say you've got to be a little bit crazy to want to do, to put your body through that. So what is it that sort of, in, you know, you really embrace it and you work so hard each day. What, where's the love for it? I love pushing myself to the limit. I love knowing that I've got the most out of myself in whatever I've chosen to do in my life, whether it's academia, whether it's my career and now in sport. I've always wanted to know that I've, I've given it everything, but you know, there are so many different motivational kind of carrots and sticks and as a sports person you want to be the best that you can be and that's what drives me each and every day, but you know, you're, you're driven by the desire, the motivation to, to win, also fear of losing is, is, is a big stick, but for me also just knowing that the more I can achieve in the sport, the bigger the platform I have and the more impact I can have out of it is also a huge motivational factor for me. And it's now it's only a few weeks since you've come back from Hawaii where you took part in the Ironman World Championships and of course won it for the fourth time. Uh, can you just explain just how grueling that task is? It was close to nine hours, I believe, your time? Yeah. Um, an Ironman is, is grueling no matter where you do it. It's particularly demanding in um, Hawaii, obviously, incredibly hot 90 90 degrees and 90 percent humidity and it takes place in the lava fields which the, the heat just radiates off the black the black rock so yeah it is like competing in an oven and a sauna and coupled with that you've got the huge pressure that any world championships brings you know there's a lot of media attention a lot of sponsor commitments that surround it plus the own pressure and the weight of expectation that you put on your own shoulders so definitely competing there is 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 very grueling both physically and mentally and i was so happy to be able to secure my my fourth world championship victory i was going to say i mean how much of it is down to the mental attitude because obviously physically you can get yourself in a certain shape but when you're competing for such a long distance and such a long amount of time there must be moments in the race where it would be you know doubts creeping you can be um at your physical peak but if your mind is not strong you will never be able to achieve what you set out to achieve um our sport is, I think, 50% physical, 50% mental. You know, you have to have a strong mind. You have to be able to almost disassociate yourself from the pain and the discomfort. You have to be able to endure uh, the, the boredom. You know, you have to be able to have the strength of mind to stay in the moment, um, to remain confident, to remain positive, to be able to face adversity, all of those things. And I, I think that's, why um, this sport maybe suits people that are slightly older because not only because of you know endurance sports sometimes suit people that are maybe in, in the 30s and, and early 40s but also because I think 
you're, you're, you're mentally more mature um, and I think our, our race suits that but you know I, I see people achieving great things across all of the age categories all the way up to 80 plus it's amazing. As I said, uh, you enjoy the challenge, and one of the challenges you must find is that you are on often occasions competing against men, and you're quite often beating the men as well. Uh, how, do they, how do they take it that they're getting beat by you? Well, they've coined a phrase, it's called being chicked now, um, <laughs> and I do take um, pleasure in, in chicking as many men as, as possible. It, you know, I think that the, the gap between men and women in endurance sports um, particularly in the Ironman is, is narrow, narrowing and the gender differences are, are somewhat somewhat less um, than, than in other sports and it's, and it's, it's so wonderful to see um, and it's great to be part of um, a process whereby we're, the women are almost defying what is deemed possible and I think a few years ago they thought you know it was normal for a women to, woman to ride five hours for the 112 miles and run a marathon in three hours after after the bike and hopefully myself and and other athletes are showing that those limits are are capable of of, of definitely being exceeded and I think other we're raising the bar and, and other athletes are rising up to meet it. And you clearly like the adrenaline rush and pushing yourself and everything that comes with, with the masochism, with the mind, yeah, exactly. the endorphins. It's, that's, uh, it's, that's a, it's a drug of the healthiest kind. I think. So would you yeah. ever consider? Obviously, there's the marathon in the Sahara Desert across six days, which of course is world famous. Is that something that you consider? I definitely see myself. Um, doing some crazy bonkers endurance challenges, um, you know, maybe conspiring with someone like James Cracknell to do like a, a you know, tag team event, but definitely some kind of cross-continental challenge would be really appealing and not necessarily only swim, bike and run. Um, I'm willing to, to try my hand at, at anything if it means testing <laughs> myself but yeah there are some great endurance you know endurance events endurance challenges out there that I've got my name written all over it. You've already broken world records by multiple titles what's left to achieve? Pushing my body to the to the limit but I, I, I take my responsibility as a professional athlete very seriously and I think that that means more than just performing on the pitch so I want to be a lot more active in terms of the ambassadorial role I pay um, for, my, for the charities in which I support. I want to set up my own charitable foundation. I'd like to do a lot more media work, um, public speaking, I love public speaking, um, and to non-triathlon audiences, so corporate, you know, corporate speaking events as well. Um, TV presenting if the opportunity arose. You know, I, I, I can see myself still doing professional sport but hopefully um, combining that with, with other activities and then once I retire really um, seizing those by, by the throat and taking some of them forward.